<laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman. man I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's man's Cinema Sit Down. Um, so we got another Netflix movie we got to today. And um, man, is it interesting. It's super interesting, uh, both from its story and its delivery, um, as well as its conceptual idea and, and execution uh, uh, of that idea. Um, really, really interesting stuff. And when you throw it into the world of Black Mirror, this movie functions so, so well. Um, now, I will say I don't think this movie would function on the big screen, uh, certainly because it has a specific element to it. Um, but if you look, e even from a movie standpoint, I don't quite think it feels like a cinematic movie. Um, but if you look at it as a feature-length episode of Black Mirror, Wow, dude, I really dug this. Um, and it is. It's very, very interesting, especially if you're familiar with a specific type of book um, that as a kid in the 90s, I got to uh, experience through goosebumps. So pull up a chair, man. Take a seat. We are uh, sort of going to dive in spoiler free on Bander Snatch. Um, yes, I, I say goosebumps because as a kid, goosebumps, very, very popular uh, back in the 90s. And there was a stretch of books where, you know, if you got those, they were kind of choose your own destiny books. Um, you know, you get to a page and it's like you can go right or go left. Uh, go left, go to page 24. Go right, go to page 133. Um, you kind of hop around the book and make decisions and end up with different endings every time you would. Bandersnatch takes that idea and applies it to the world of a movie in a really, really effective way. Now, I know that this has existed in other mediums. Um, I, I believe there's a Facebook show or something now that's kind of playing with this idea. I haven't personally seen that show, but this is the first movie I've ever really seen that kind of had you decide and the seamlessness of the technology. Uh, the Netflix application itself works so well for this movie because it just... Uh, I have a PlayStation, so the PlayStation vibrates every time you're about to make a decision. And even if you're just with a controller or whatever, you would think when you make a decision, it would be kind of choppy. And and some of the cuts seem slightly abrupt, but it is fairly seamless, um, which it, it was fascinating to me. I, I was super impressed with how well it functioned. Um, then throw into the fact that this movie has like a whole bunch of different endings. That's why I only say we can sort of dive into it. I've only watched the movie once, and in my viewing, I think I got five or six different endings with one uh, definitive ending. You get to the definitive ending, and the actual credits roll, and you, you know, kind of sends you back out to Netflix. But until you get to a definitive end, uh, the movie does end several times, and then gives you the ability to jump backwards. Um, and, and the story is uh, about this kid, Stefan Butler, um, played by Fionn Whitehead. And uh, he's, you know, kind of a loner, uh, big into games, big into trying to build a game. Um, and I think it takes place in the 80s. And it, he's read this book called Bandersnatch, and it's this pick-your-own-destiny book. And he loved it so much, he decided to turn it into a video game. He's going to go pitch to this big video game company. Um, and, and when he pitches it... They like the idea and they take it on. And there's another creator uh, in the uh, the company, played by Will Poulter, who uh, I absolutely love. He, he's been in things like uh, We're the Millers and Maze Runner. Um, but Will Poulter's character is kind of like the young uh, video game genius, man. Every video game he makes uh, is a smash hit. Very similar uh, to Grandma's Boy. I uh, think that movie, that's who Will Poulter uh, plays. Colin Rittman. Um, and, and, you know, Stefan gets the ability to get a chance to make his game. And that's kind of the basis of the story until you get to start making decisions. And right away, the first decision you make, well, there's a couple that are light, but the first big decision you make in the movie um, actually can lead you to an end right away. Like 15 minutes in, I was at an end. Um, and what's interesting is Will Poulter's character um, throughout the movie will talk about the idea of you know, there are multiple realities and that you can, based on your decision making, you can end up in a different place. Um, but it's all about how you choose. And they kind of throw that at you a lot. But it plays really, really well as far as the Bandersnatch story. Take out the fact that the audience is actually choosing things. Um, you know, being self-aware to the idea that this movie knows that's what it is. Um, it works well within the story that, like, 
you know, Will talks about these different realities and the fact that you can kind of go back and maybe do things differently. Uh, and then when you do get to go back, when you get to that, if you do pick the option that ends the movie about 15 minutes in, you know, Will Poulter, once, I'll give you one spoiler, Will Poulter kind of walks by after you make the decision and goes, wrong choice, friend. And like that, those things I just thought worked so well. Uh, and then it sends you back and you get to kind of redo the decision. Um, and when you do, then it's like, hey, I feel like I've seen you from somewhere before. And it all kind of starts to play with the idea of multiple realities. Um, I just thought that was fascinating. And, and it, like I said, as far as Black Mirror story goes, man, does this work really, really well. Um, it totally hits all the technology and sci-fi stuff that and social experiments and social commentary that we're very familiar with from Black Mirror. Um, and puts it into this movie that, like I said, is self-aware of the fact that it's making choices. And I like that the movie allows you to get to multiple endings on one watch. Um, because you kind of, your character can learn from some of the things that you choose, and going back kind of progresses the movie in a way that kind of fleshes it out almost like a full thing. Um, where you kind of sit back and go, if I didn't make these choices and the movie just played this way, that's pretty solid. Throw in the fact that you're the one in control. Um, I mean, the movie is so smart that at one point it even references the fact that, like, even when you're doing one of those books or a video game that's like, a, you know, make a choice rather than, like, you know, an action fighting game, that even though you do have the ability to make a choice, it's always, there, there's someone else that's, there's always someone who's a master puppeteer, right? There's always someone else who's actually driving the story. Like, the story you make decisions, but the author has an ultimate goal with that story, and the movie plays into that stuff. I just thought all of that was really, really cool. Um, and, and I dug the performances from the majority of the cast. Uh, Fionn Whitehead, I think, is really, really great. Um, he, he does a really good job of playing kind of this loner recluse um, that's very focused. It just everything that he's doing works quite well for his character. Um, Will Poulter, I love Will Poulter. He is super cool as Colin Rittman, man. He's the kind, you can see right away why Fionn would want to be like Colin. Uh, the rest of the supporting cast, though, also uh, pretty solid. Um, Craig Parkinson, uh, who plays Fionn's dad, um, he certainly has some major roles in decision-making in this movie. And you can get to, with one decision involving Craig Parkinson's character, Peter Butler, um, you can get to like three different endings based on what you pick. Um, and then Alice Lowe plays Dr. Haynes, who's kind of like the shrink that Fionn is seeing. And uh, I like how the story plays with those two characters. Uh, the way um, Dr. Haynes and Peter Butler know each other and the way their story goes, really interesting things. Um, you know, and, and I just, I really enjoyed um, the, the world that Bandersnatch builds. Uh, Asim Chaudhry, who plays Mohan Takor, he's the owner of the company. I just liked him. He, he's there for little bits, but he, he injects a bunch of energy every time he's on screen. And I enjoyed uh, his performance for that. Um, you know, and he, he does get you to crack a smile or two. Um, but yeah, man, overall, I, I just think Bandersnatch is a really interesting movie. And it, I like that, like, you can go back to certain elements of the movie and there are certain things like symbols or words and if you choose specific things it will open up a very very specific story and that's really cool so I can only kind of kind of touch on things um, because I've only watched it once and only come up with about four or five endings but apparently they're a whole slew and the creators even said that they knew when they were filming that there were endings that maybe no one would see which makes me think there must be a secret pathway somewhere in this movie and that is genius in the fact that this movie becomes so rewatchable um, because you want to find out all the different endings. So I'm definitely going to dive back into Bandersnatch and see what other wacky endings I can come up with um, and different paths uh, for, you know, Stefan to, to go through. So I really dug Bandersnatch. I'm totally excited to, to go back in, dive in, and watch it again and see where else we can end up. Um, I just thought from a conceptual standpoint, it's brilliant. Um, and from a movie standpoint, it, it's a really solid feature-length episode for, for Black Mirror. Um, a, a, as a movie, it's okay. Um, but when you take in the fact that it's a Black Mirror, you know, it's it's in the Black Mirror universe, and if you can look at it like a length, full feature-length episode, it's so creative and inventive. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, but now I want to know what you think, man. Have you checked out Bandersnatch yet? Uh, have you enjoyed getting to pick the destiny of Stefan Butler and, and, you know, all of the extra characters that are in the movie? Um, 
do you not like it? Did you just think it was really weak all around and you couldn't care less about the decision-making stuff? Um, how'd you like the technology? Did you like the way it worked on Netflix um, and, and the way that it got you at least a couple endings within one watch and you're not having to like constantly go back and do all the choices all over again all the time? Let me know everything you're thinking down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video and review, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe and little bell so you get alerts every time I make a new video. For the Seaman's Cinema, sit down. I'm the Seaman, and I'm signing off. Peace. Well, I'll be. You guys are still here. You must be looking for some more content. Well, don't worry. Seaman's got you covered, man. You got videos like this guy and this guy. And if you haven't yet, and you want to come check out all the Seaman goodies, join the Cinema Sit Down Squad, man. Hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the little bell down below that, too, so you can get alerts every time I make new videos.